peace of the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, speak to us. Be with us as your word is preached and may your spirit prepare our heart to receive it with a joyful and obedient heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm no good in uh, drawing or painting, but I like to appreciate beautiful masterpiece painting because when I look at it long enough, I'm drawn into every part of details and there's a message that is deep and manifold. There's, I'm drawn into the, the, the message or the story that is hidden in the pic, uh, picture itself or the painting itself, not just at the one glance. There is deeper message. One of the paintings that I liked very much when I was younger was a painting of um, Daniel in the lion's den. And there is a painting of Daniel taming the lions in different forms of draw, uh, painting that hangs on the wall of many Sunday school classrooms. In SKMC, we don't have that yet, but I saw it in many uh, other churches. We learn that because of Daniel's faithfulness, he is safe from becoming the main cause at dinner in the lion's den. But the Sunday school lesson seldom includes the story stories, context of politics and patriotism. You see, Daniel is forced to decide whether his ultimate loyalty will be to his God or his king, his calling or his career, his faith or his flag. Jesus defines it as the choice between God or Caesar. Church, my dear brothers and sisters, the choice still confronts us with or without the lions. This morning, we are going to learn valuable lessons from the life of God's servant living in the real world. When we live in the real world, there are a few things that we need to be aware and come into terms to accept it. First of all, life has its ups and downs. Life, sometimes you have to accept that there are rainy days. Sometimes we enjoy sunny days. And there are good days there are bad days. Sometimes life throws curveballs at us. One of the realistic features of life is found in Daniel chapter 6. We realize that in his experience, life experience in his day where they live in the real world, fortunes regularly rise and fall. Success is changing and transient. At the beginning of chapter 6 in Daniel, the book of Daniel, Daniel is identified as one of the top three government officials in Babylon. And the next thing we know, he is charged with treason, convicted and sentenced to death in the lion's den. But by the end of the chapter, Verse 28, he is restored to his former position of influence and success. 
this roller coaster experience of prosperity and crisis is one that many people, even up to today, can testify it. Sometimes we are in good health, and who knows the next moment, illness stricken us. We don't know, especially during this ongoing pandemic crisis. It has affected many areas of life and caused many people to fall into the trout of life from their stable days. Are you one of them that is facing a lot of financial challenges or family challenges or health that is your great challenge? Now, there is, we have to accept that there's ups and downs pattern of life. But amid these ups and downs, where is our stability? Our stability has to come from the sustaining grace of God to help us go through whatever that comes by. This up and down pattern of life is echoed in the experience of our Lord Jesus Christ too. You see, on Palm Sunday, Jesus is gloriously greeted by enthusiastic crowds as king. But then, just as Daniel is betrayed by his colleagues, Jesus is betrayed by Judas and by his fellow countrymen. Like King Darius in Daniel's time, Pilate seems anxious to release Jesus, but fails to do so. Neither Daniel nor Jesus is safe from their sentence. One went to the lions, the other hanged on the cross. Church, there will always be up and downs in life. We have to accept if we re live in this earthly time, this world, this is something that we have to face the reality but draw strength, draw God, promise from God to know how to live a life that is worthy of God's salvation. Let us return to Daniel chapter 6 and take a closer look at this man who lived and shined for God and remained faithful to God in the ups and downs in his days. And so when he lived in this world, besides the ups and downs of his life experience, we also know that he has achievement in this life. It is okay to have achievement, but we need to know where our allegiance is. So second point, achievement and allegiance in life. Daniel has risen to a high and influential position in the Babylonian government and is favored by the king to be the prime minister in charge of the whole kingdom. My dear brothers and sisters, let's know, have this, uh, put this right. God is certainly not opposed to earthly prosperity and achievement. The question is whether our ways of attaining achievement are pleasing to God. Daniel showed us the values and principles he adhered to in his achievements. There are a few eight principles that he holds dearly. First, no tricks, no conspiracy. Daniel's earthly achievement was attained without tricks or dirty conspiracies. His jealous colleagues tried to catch him out, but verse 4 tells us that they could find no ground for complaint or and he fought. There's something unique about Daniel. His attitude is different. 
The Bible says in verse 3, because an excellent spirit was in him. It is the spirit of God, excellent spirit. And so Daniel is someone who stood head and shoulders above everyone else because of his spirit, his attitude. So check on our inner life when we live in this world. Don't just let the current carry you away. Don't just follow the trend. It is the inner man, the spirit that helps us to go through the ups and downs of life. The Bible tells us the high officials and satraps go further to employ dirty politics to trap him. Church, we can strive for success or achievement in the world. We can pray that we can make a difference, but don't play tricks. Don't make conspiracies. And the second principle that Daniel ho holds on is to be faithful and consistent in his inner life and his outer life. Daniel 6 reminds us that the way to sh we shine as God's beacon is not by escaping from the real world, but by living faithfully in it so that no error or fault is found in us. That is our weakness, and God wants to enable us, as he did Daniel, to be distinctive, shining lights in, the, in a world where integrity and allegiance are often cast aside in the relent, relentless pursuit of success. There's a different way when we achieve success, when we strive for success. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Daniel is presented in this chapter not only as a man with prominent achievement and integrity, but as a godly man with true allegiance to God. He is faithful and consistent in his life. People who knew Daniel knew that he was committed to God. His faith was not concealed. Neither must ours when we live in a world like this. How would your, your colleagues look at you? Do they know that you are a Christian? Do your neighbours know that you are Christians? Is God's light able to shine through us in our daily actions and in our love for others? To be God's true light. We cannot be ashamed of our allegiance to God. So when we talk about achievement, we need to talk about allegiance. Some achieve earthly success but are not known for their faithful devotion to God. Others may be known for the energy they devote to God's service but are not known for diligence and integrity in the office. May the example of Daniel's faithfulness and his allegiance to God inspire us. And the third principle, the values that Daniel teaches us is that he never compromised, never betrayed. Daniel's earthly achievements was attained without compromising his faith and allegiance to God. His response in verse 10 of chapter 6 sharpens this point. The Bible says, when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, 
he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God and as he had done previously. As he has done previously. The king's document ordered that people were not allowed to pray to their gods. And those who violated it would be thrown into the lion's den. And maybe some in his days, they tried to ban it, compromise, saying to themselves, Surely God would understand for these 30 days if I close the door and pray secretly, lest I be judged. Or if I don't pray or worship God temporarily for this just 30 days, I believe God will understand because we are in a very challenging ch situation. Because if I pray the way I use, always do, I may lose my official position or even my life. God, what then is my use for you and others if I've lost this? So we try to, some people may try to give a lot of reasoning, excuses to justify our compromising to the situation. My dear brothers and sisters, in the face of trials and life threat, how will Christians of our age react? Will you compromise? Will you give a lot of excuses to stay away from Seemingly danger. Our service is 845 service. Have you been joining us at 845 live streaming service? Or you just tune in at your own convenient time? We are unable to still come on physical on-site worship the church. We are we will uh, we'll be uh, having meetings and look into uh, the implications to let you know when we can come back safely and in what size. But when we are able in whatever size for physical on-site worship. Do you or are you willing to come back joyfully to meet and worship with the church? Or we are still too comfortable worshiping God in our own comfort way, our own convenient times. Church, aren't there some ways of compromising? God have mercy on us. Daniel did not make any compromises. The issue is not whether God would understand if we choose to stop serving him for 30 days or whatever days. The issue is whether we regard our achievements and status and our safety as more important than Loyalty to God. For Daniel, he would never betray God to keep his achievement in this world. The primary message of Daniel 6 is not about how we can achieve and retain earthly success. It challenges us to regard allegiance to God as more important than achievement and even life on earth. So when we live a life in this real world, first, 
We accept the fact that life has its ups and downs. Prepare for it. And when we live on this earth, we do our part. We um, achieve whatever that God wants us to attain. But know where our, and who our allegiance is to. Thirdly, when we live in this world, when we are faced with a lot of challenges, we need to know where is our source of ultimate deliverance. Source of ultimate deliverance. Daniel briefly stood by his faith. He was miraculously delivered from the lion's den. However, his history is full of people of faith and integrity who have not survived their date with lions. Where do we find our ultimate deliverance? If the book of Daniel ends in chapter 6, we will lack a comprehensive understanding of God's ultimate deliverance. Thanks be to God. Daniel does not stop at chapter 6. It has a second part, chapter 7 to chapter 12. According to our church, SKMC's pupil plan, after Daniel chapter 6, the first part of our CBE, Community Bible Experience, will come to an end. We will continue the second part of the book of Daniel in mid-September after celebrating SK21, our 21st anniversary of the church. And so I would like to give you a full picture of God's deliverance by connecting the second part of the book to the first six chapters of the book of Daniel. The tone of the second part of the book is quite different from the first. In the second half, we are told of beasts and monsters who oppose God and oppress the saints, that is, wise people of faith and integrity who, like Daniel, trusted in God. Where is the faithful and friends in chapter 1 to 6 are miraculously delivered from the fiery furnace and the lion's den. The people in chapter 7 to 12 are, and you can refer to chapter 11, says that they are oppressed or die by the sword becoming the prey or plunder of evil monsters. And so, in the second half of the book, God's deliverance and vindication of the faithful takes place after death, not during their life, not like Daniel survived the lion's den. In fact, church history tells us all the apostles died tragic death. Therefore, it is not always true that if I trust God and follow Jesus, I will always end up prosperous and successful at the latter part of my life. There's a, a common teaching, prosperity gospel, that keeps telling us that if you trust God, life will be a smooth seal. You will prosper. But history and the book, the Bible tells us not really so. God has a bigger plan. Because God did not promise a healthy, wealthy, and prosperous life. On the contrary, God promises His grace to be sufficient for you to face pain and persecution. Following Jesus Christ is a call to deny ourselves, take up the cross, and lose our life for Jesus' sake. If God deliver me every time when I call, thanks be to God. 
But if God wants me to go through great suffering, persecution, or even lay my life for him, so be it. Because we have to believe that God has a higher plan. And this life does not detect what God's ultimate deliverance is. And so in conclusion, Daniel chapter 6 reminds us that the cunning colleagues and callous political leaders or even like our bosses do not control our ultimate destinies. God does. And it is Him we must trust. It is Him we must remain faithful to in life and in death. The story of Daniel in the lion's den and his miraculous deliverance serve to nurture faith, to inspire God's people in all ages to remain faithful, even to death. Do you get the point? Are you prepared for it? If we need God to add faith to us, to put our trust in Him. Pray now and ask God to give me such faith. I believe in you, but my faith is not enough. God, add faith. When we are weak and when we face impossible situations, that's why you need to have faith to stop the mouths of lions. And when the mouths of lions are truly stopped, People around us are amazed. Is there someone who, because you have sought to live diligently and faithfully, have found yourself left behind as others search ahead in today's world? Is there someone who have been trying to follow Jesus faithfully all the all these years, and find yourself facing with a lot of challenges, one after another, don't give up. Don't give up. Take comfort from the book of Daniel and remain true to the God who holds the destiny of you and your loved ones in his hands. We are in his hand. He has a bigger plan. He has a mystery in his salvation for you, for me, and for the world. Apart from God, there is no better destiny for us or our families. And so, like Daniel, let us remain resolute in that conviction. Church, the issue before us then is not whether Christian lives in the real world. We do. We all do. The real issue is in what manner will you live? Let us pause and send, spend some quiet moment to take him the message that God has for you and for us this morning. God, we admit that we are weak and we cannot boast and say that we will surely stand firm when we are at the bottom of the li our life. But Lord, we choose to fix our eyes on you and call upon your name to allow your sustaining grace to hold us, to allow your love and your peace that surpasses all the understanding 
fill us, strengthen us in moments like that. So that by your grace, we can be faithful to you all the days of our life until we meet you face to face. In Jesus' precious name we pray.